Hello everyone, my name is Stephen Tippy, and I'm a Senior Product Training and Support Analyst with FCC Ag Expert. Today I'm going to take you through processing a payroll remittance. Let's get started. Uh, if you remember, in our last video, we recorded some paychecks for May here, and you'll see those listed on the screen. Um, those paychecks would be due to CRA, as far as remittance is concerned, on the 15th of the month following the dates on the paycheck. So we had dated these paychecks as of May 31st, and which means the remittance is due on June 15th. So when the time comes, we would just click on remittances here on the left hand side and you'll see it's fairly obvious here. Uh, there's a new remittance button that we'll click on when we're ready to start processing. I'm just going to touch briefly on settings over here. This is where if I had some um, remittances other than the CRA ones, which are all set up by default, um, I would be able to see those here um, for the custom deductions, like let's say I had something set up with Blue Cross, or uh, in this instance, we have some WCB rates set, so there would be a WCB remittance due um, periodically. Uh, so I can assign the supplier, the accounts payable supplier that the remittance will get posted to, um, as well as what expense account, if there are any expenses that are associated with processing that remittance. Um, and I would just come into the settings to set those up. So we're doing our CRA payroll remittance, which means we don't have to do anything fancy. It's already arranged in the system here. So I'm just gonna click on new remittance and we'll choose CRA source deductions. We're going to go here and you'll notice, remember we did the paychecks for May and you'll see it's dated for January 31st here. That is uh, normal. Um, there is one payroll remittance per month. We set ourselves up as monthly remitters. And so all we have to do to get to where we need to is process the remittances for the months leading up to the one that we're actually working with. So we'll just go ahead and process a $0 remittance for each one of January, February, March, and April. Perfect. And you'll see each one of those remittances as they were saved. They're available here. I can click on them to go and review the report. And if there were any paychecks, I would see those listed here. I could also click on the three dots at the end here and print that report off if I wanted to have that for filing purposes. So we're going to get ready now. We're in a situation where we can do our May remittance report. Across the top here, you'll see it gives me all the information I need to submit that remittance to CRA, um, whether I'm doing that over the phone or online or by mail. And again, what I would do is just click in here and see all of the paychecks that are included. Just always a good practice to do a quick review of this to make sure if there's anything wonky, um, if I made any mistakes, this is a good chance for me to catch those so I can see my advance uh, being repaid from Alex because we had issued him that advance in the year. The salaries are all looking good. The deductions are all looking good. And I can click on save. And again, I could go to the three dots and print that off for myself. Sometimes it's handy to have that up on the screen um, or to have a printed report just while I'm doing that remittance so that those numbers are handy for me. Uh, what happens when I record a payroll remittance is that it creates, um, well, starting off, it clears the, the, the payroll liability accounts, which are here. Let's go and take a look. So as I make deductions, it is putting those into these liability accounts because those are monies that I you know, aren't for me, they're owed to CRA. Um, these liability accounts store them. When I generate a remittance report, it clears these out and then posts a charge into accounts payable for me here. And you'll see that that has now a balance on it. And what I can do then is I can go to my purchases and to a transaction. We'll do a new transaction. It's a withdrawal. And 
we're going to choose our CRA payroll as our vendor and it's going to come out of our main bank account and if I have a reference number like I'm sending in a check I can type that in here this would have been done on oops on June 15th and uh, if I wanted to I could you know attach copies of pay stubs or um, I don't know that I would attach that report in because it's already available to me um, in that other screen but if there were other supporting documents you wanted to add you could add those here and what I'm going to do is we're clearing an accounts payable item so I'm going to choose PP payable payment as my line type and you'll see then it selects that 2100 account that we were looking at in the other window and I can see my open payables here's the one that's that May remittance I can select that and I can type in a description uh, May pay checks and it'll fill in that amount for me automatically and I can click Save and at that point in time the program has recorded a withdrawal from the bank account and has cleared that accounts payable amount so if we were to go in here again now we'll see accounts payable at 2100 oops uh, no longer has a balance there that is it you are finished your first payroll run we've taken you from setting up your payroll through to dealing with some setting up deductions and benefits and um, recording paychecks and finally running a remittance that is a basic payroll run encapsulated for you if you need help with anything that is beyond what these videos are providing to you you can always reach us here at 1-800-667 7893. You can email us at support at fccagexpert.ca and you can always visit our online community. There are links there for our knowledge base. Um, there's a discussion board where you can ask questions and of course you can also initiate a click to chat session with us there. Thanks again for watching and I hope you all have a lovely day.